is it like for you now, you know, knowing that Kevin and David are going to these screenings? Are you nervous at all? No, I'm not nervous. I mean, I'm, I just think I'm more aware. Like, I'm quite a dopey person. I don't really take a lot of notice. But now when I'm sitting here, I will just scan the whole audience <laughs> automatically and just see who's there because I'm curious what's coming at me. And, you know, when they're in the audience, it can turn into a real combative sort of environment. Um, so, yeah, I'm just aware. It's odd. You know, there were, I had a private investigator outside my house in New Zealand for a while, and it just makes you a bit aware of what's around you. And we're not under any physical threat. It's just, I don't know, it's a bit like Scientology, right? They're just around, you know. <laughs> you know, it's a thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we talked a lot about this, and um, generally, if the videos were historic and they'd been offline for a very long time, we blurred. Stuff that was out on force on the internet with their names attached and sort of various lies about the victims in there, we used, for some of those people, we used bits of them without permission, but in context. And we've talked to some of the people since, and they are kind of... I mean, quite a few people have come out since we put the film out and they've sort of, they've seen it and they've been like, it's kind of given them context of what happened to them. Some of them had a great time. They were tickled and they got paid and they went home and it was all right. But for the ones that ended up with this sort of bizarre harassment campaign, they, they seem grateful for the film and, you know, they've sort of talked about it as some sort of sense of closure in it. And there's just so many more stories coming. I mean, people are contacting us through our Facebook and Twitter just saying, this happened to me 15 years ago, this is my story, and this happened, and this happened, and there's so many people. Because, I mean, with Jane O'Brien alone, the videos, we downloaded about 600 of them. And I don't think the scope is maybe portrayed at the beginning of this film as well as it could have been, but there were, you know, 600 Jane O'Brien videos, there are sometimes up to 10 different men in them, but then that stretches back 20 years. So there's like a lot of people. Dylan and I and, and our producer and our DP, we just wanted to make it look good. You know, there was a sort very early on, you know, we had 600 tickling videos. This is great content. It can just be, all this can illustrate it with tickling. But you can only watch so much tickling. <laughs> Honestly, it's just like you have enough at some point. I think even when you love tickling, you have unless enough. Unless you're David. <laughs> unless, you're, yeah. unless, you're, unless you're David. Um, and so, yeah, we just wanted to make it look good. And we just, you know, the... the some of the central themes, I think, in the film are, you know, power and control and manipulation. And so we sort of see, like, anything we see that reflects that, whether it's, uh, you know, really, it's, you know, I think it's a really heavy-handed bit, where there's a, you know, a hawk ripping apart a squirrel. But we just shot it, you know, those moments as we found them. And, yeah, we wanted to illustrate it in a way that wasn't just tickling, and it, and it was in a slightly abstract way. Um, because, yeah, you get sick of looking at tickling. And I didn't want it to be a movie about tickling, because it's not about tickling. It's about something else. Not in this film. I don't think, you know, we sort of, we wanted to know who was behind it. There was a difficulty where there's no one alive that knows him. He doesn't have, that we can tell, friends or family. You know, Dorothy hadn't seen him in a very long time. Um, and we didn't, I didn't want to go in analysing him because um, there's already enough defamation lawsuit stuff flying around at me. And I'm not, yeah, I didn't want to put someone in the film picking apart his brain. I didn't think that was fair. And it wasn't, again, it wasn't what this film was about, I don't think. But I'm super curious about what's going on in there. Is there a criminal case that could be laid out against him? Um, you know, there's, there's certainly things he's doing that, you know, I'm not an expert in the law, but there's things to me that seem um, somewhat questionable. You know, he's getting, just even the fact he's getting young men to come in on tourist visas when they're working, um, he is saying that he is a practicing attorney. He's not, he hasn't passed the bar. You know, there's, there's issues like that. There's lots of little ones. And there's obviously the online harassment, which we're all trying to get our heads around, I think, because that's obviously a huge problem online beyond this film. Um, so, yeah, I mean, part of the reason to make the film was to shine a light on it and, you know, hopefully something can happen.